Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I hope you're having a lovely day. Uh, you probably are able to tell if you've seen any of my other videos before, the fact that I'm in a different location. I'm currently dog sitting. You can see um, the culprit over there <laughs> behind me. Um, and so she was just looking so adorable while she was sleeping. I decided to do a quick 10 minute painting of her. Um, so that's what this video is going to be. Before I get into it, I'm mentioning my website, CoreyFrankCreates.com. You can go there, find all the things I offer as an artist, in particular my art shop with different products, uh, my artwork printed on them. And then at the bottom of any page on my website, you can sign up for my email newsletter. You would just scroll to the bottom of the page, enter your first and last name, email address, and then check your inbox or spam folder for the confirmation link. Once you click on that, you will get an email from me once a week, just with some tips and updates and things like that. So again, I'd love if you check it out, CoreyFrankCreates.com. So for this 10 minute painting, as I said, I'm painting the little Moo over there. And uh, it's uh, it was a little hard because I was quite a distance from her. Normally I work from a reference image. This time I was working from life and she shifted a couple times and then also was a little further away so I couldn't get as detailed. So again, this is a 10 minute painting, not meant to be super detailed or, or high quality necessarily, but it was just a really fun kind of watercolor, watercolor sketch that I did. So I'm going to take you through that process in real time so you can see what it looked like. Starting out, it's going to take a little while before you're actually able to recognize that this is a sleeping dog in the image. And if you've seen any of my other 10 minute painting videos, you know I don't start out with a sketch, which if you want accurate proportions and you're doing a longer painting, you should definitely start with a light under sketch to make sure all your proportions are correct and shapes are in the right place and things like that. So I'm just starting with a size zero round brush and this brand runs large so it's more like a size three or four brush in all honesty um but it comes to a nice fine point so i did that little first little line i painted is this is kind of the eye um her closed eye on the one side and now i'm starting to paint the side of the face and her ear coming out and um, this is gonna by the end have a very kind of basic almost like illustration type of appearance to it uh, again when it's a shorter painting there's not as much time to put details and things like that in there so it does look more uh, like an illustration than a realistic painting but you can kind of tell by the end what <laughs> what the shapes and image is so uh, I have really just been using a really dark brown, sepia brown, and then right now I'm using black for the kind of shadow on the side of her face, and this is starting to fill in her nose a little bit. And up front, I'm working relatively slowly to try and kind of get the features of her face correct. Uh, later on, you'll see I had to move where her left eye was, or the eye on our left but her the right side of her face so uh, just really going in with those blacks and sepia browns and then starting to draw she has a kong which is kind of a, a thing that you can put treats in right next to her face <laughs> so that's what I'm starting to paint now and just shading it so that it has kind of the dark rounded edges on one side and then the highlights on uh, the other where the light is shining from. That really dark part is the opening of the Kong, so it's it's very dark because it's in complete shadow. And then on the back portions, using a little bit of the wet into wet technique for kind of fine, uh, smoother shading as it uh, has a gradient from the dark black to a lighter gray. Here I'm starting to paint the shape of her other ear and I have watered down sepia brown. Most of the brown I use in this is the sepia brown. 
uh, when you have a full amount of paint on there, you can tell it's very, very dark, but when you water it down, it becomes a little lighter, almost like a grayish brown. A lot of this has been wet paint on dry paper, and that's to kind of get the uh, sharp delineations when you work wet into wet, the colors bleed into each other and make it smoother. Here's where you can see I um, blotted that eye up just with a clean brush and kept dabbing clean water over it and lifting it with the brush until it was mostly gone. And then went back to reposition the eye because it was just in a slightly awkward placement. And I'm using the black paint, just kind of paint a thin line for her eye because it's closed. And then I used a tiny bit of quinacridone rose right around the edges because she has, since she has the white fur on that side of her face, her pink skin shows through quite a bit. So that's what the quinacridone rose color was for. And for an outline color, even though this was not necessarily the color that was actually behind her, it was really more of a kind of light grayish brown, I wanted to have a little pop of color in this so that it wouldn't be all browns, grays, and blacks. So I went ahead and used some sap green, uh, which just added kind of a nice uh, pop of brightness. Here I'm starting to paint the uh, dog bed that she's on and Again, it's sepia brown, but I also use a little bit of burnt umber because it has a little more of a uh, warm tone to it than the sepia. I'm just very lightly blocking in color because it, it was a light, here you can tell is the uh, burnt umber, a warmer tone, a little more orangey colors in it. And then the dark shadows for the kind of folds of the cloth uh, are the sepia brown again, because they're a little darker. And you can tell that I used the wet into wet technique where I put that burnt umber because the edges bled out and became very soft. Now I'm kind of painting the outline of her body. She's curled up nice and tight. All her legs and limbs are kind of burrowed up underneath her. <laughs> so the, the dog poof, as I like to call it, really kind of uh, mostly outlined the whole front of her body and a little bit of the back of her back. played around a little bit with letting the green background kind of bleed into the dog bed, especially on that left side of the painting. And then that edge of the bed is a really dark brown, so I just laid that in with a lot of thick paint. Now I'm doing some of the kind of creases and folds of the bed over on the left side, darkening it up a little so there's more of a contrast between um, her back and the poof. Here I'm finally putting a little bit of shading so that you can see kind of the 
edges of her front and back legs a little bit and then her chin, kind of the underside of her chin uh, using, I think, a combination of black and the sepia brown. So you can see the style is very much like a super simple, almost children's book type of illustration, uh, but it's just fun and whimsical and it was cool to capture her as she was taking a nap. And like I said, you know, she shifted a couple times and I was about, oh, 15, 16 feet away, maybe a little more. So I wasn't able to see as much detail and I know I said with the 10 minute paintings it's not about super detailed accurate dimensions or anything like that uh, but it is maybe even a little less detailed than many of the other paintings in my 10 minute series because typically with those I'm looking I'm very up close to my computer screen and I can zoom in on an image versus this being from life and from a distance but I, I looked at my time and realized I didn't have uh, much left. So I went ahead and added a signature. And right as I finished the signature, that really was about the 10 minute mark. But then I went ahead and went for a few more seconds just to add some fun kind of splashes and splatters of paint. It just adds a, more of a whimsical quality. So really lots of water and paint on the brush with the sap green and then the sepia brown. So I dipped it in the paint and then dipped it in the water, flick it along my finger, and then it gives that fun spatter speckle effect. And that's the final piece. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Go ahead and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I would really appreciate it. Until my next video, be kind to yourself, be kind to others. God bless and I'll see you soon.